finally scored the new 2009 Cold Steel catalog. They do a great job with their catalog. I, I've said that before in other videos. Great pictures, great product presentation. Usually a pretty good write-up on each blade. A couple things I've noticed, though, that I don't like. They went to a bold-faced type. Uh, I'm not sure why they did that. Makes it a little bit harder to read. Just a minor quibble, but a little bit obnoxious. Also, they took the prices out of their catalog. Huh. Wonder, wonder why you did that, Cold Steel. Um, I understand that the you know the markets are a little bit volatile. Maybe they don't want to lock themselves in. But generally, when a manufacturer takes them their prices out, in my experience, they want the option of charging more for their product. Uh, uncool. Uh, I like. I mean, you can commit for a year on the price of a knife. I would say. Uh, and so I hope that's not a, an indication of things to come from Cold Steel. I.e., we're going to keep jacking our prices up. If it is, um, they're going to lose some customers. That's just how it works, you know. Especially when other manufacturers are not following suit, nor should they. Huh? I digress. Hey, I talked about that knife, right? That's that black sable blade that we saw and reviewed, and at Impact, and uh, I had some criticisms on it. I think valid ones, and I think a lot of you weighed in and said as much as well, talking about we're going to use a Recon One as a pointer. Uh, you know, the slow deployment. I mean, that knife had some issues on it. Uh, first off, let me say first, on a positive note, very cool looking, very intimidating. Great Hollywood knife. I said that in my description and in the video because it's striking looking, isn't it? That's a cool looking blade. It's very unusual, strong tip, relatively speaking. But if you can't get it out, especially in a fast manner, what's the point? It's kind of relegated to collector status. Now, while I was showing you this Black Sable blade, um, very expensive, by the way, $300, uh, probably much less on the internet, but still, $250, that's a lot. Overpriced for me. While I was showing you that uh, this knife, I kind of rolled in one that I liked a lot better. How you doing? The Cold Steel Black Rhino, and now is its time to shine in the spotlight. Literally, look at that light, how it glints off the page. I apologize for that. Great knife. Uh, I'll tell you right up front, I'm very excited about the Black Rhino. It gets a lot of things right. In fact, most things are correct on the Black Rhino. Oh, wait, stop the presses. Nothing fancy is digging a folding knife that's 5.4 ounces. Actually, I'm going to crank my scale on here. I think it's more than that. And yeah, I have it right here. I'll show it to you in a second. Let me weigh it. Uh, yeah, that weight's a little off. I'm not sure where they're getting that. I'm weighing 7 ounces for my Black Rhino, and there it is. First off, it is an impressive blade, is it not? I mean, the catalog kind of does not do it justice. Uh, you can see the difference. The, the Black Rhino is a gleaming, very big folding tactical blade, and it's awesome. It, that's a good word for it. It's awesome because it has a very big blade to it and I'm a fan four and a quarter inches AUS 8 steel deeply hollow ground and it comes razor sharp out of the box as all knives should come out of the box hair shaving sharp there should never be a knife that doesn't come that way out of the box I'm not sure why that happens now incidentally when you first get this knife and tactical doodle looked at it and he's like that looks like a, sh a swap meet knife and <laughs> I kind of agreed if you've ever gone to a swap meet or anywhere where they're selling kind of some cheap blades you will see some very gleaming knives generally on their tables um, that's because that's what a lot of guys dig and it attracts them it doesn't mean these knives at the swap meet are necessarily well made they're generally not in my experience maybe made down south of the border or something like that but they have that real shiny it, for lack of a better word gaudy appearance now a, that's a very initial impression that is not the black rhino especially when you start looking at it um, one thing I love about the rhino and there's lots of things this is going to be mostly a positive review on this knife truly it is and it deserves it um, but I love the polished aluminum frame on the knife now, when it comes to you, it has like some layered plastic that you peel off because they are so particular. I'm making sure that that gets to you in an unscratched condition, which is smart. 
and you peel it off and you expose that virgin polished aluminum frame. Beautiful frame, beautiful frame. I'll get back to the blade here in a second. But just the glimmering uh, or the shininess of it, how it's polished, the fit and finish, the back spine also polished. You can see the camera in the reflection. That's a sign of a good polish job. That's my Sanyo Exacti VPC E1, by the way. All these guys are asking about that. But isn't that a cool frame? Now that is the looks of the frame alone. And then you have that polished black micarta handle. Big fan of that too. I love it. I think it's beautiful. It's one of my favorite handle materials. It really is. Because it just, I think it provides adequate traction. Of course, that's assuming just a utility knife. If you get it covered in some blood and stuff, probably going to be kind of slippery. But, you know, there's other materials that would probably be better in that regard. Maybe a very aggressively textured G10. That's a good choice if that's what your POU is going to call for. But I love it. I think it contrasts beautifully with that polished aluminum. Now, we could probably do some criticism of the fit and finish where those two materials meet on the handle. It's not exactly perfect, but it's good enough for me, especially for a production blade. Now, that side's a little bit better. See how the, that black micarta meets so tightly? That's the way it should be on the opposite side. However, not so much. Just kind of a little bit of a ragged line there. Still not bad. Now, one thing I want to tell you about the aluminum handle that is really cool, or not handle, but the frame is cool, is it is responsible for a very solid sound when you deploy this knife. Check it out. Now, it's hard for you to understand, not in person, the impressiveness of the, the sound. It's very loud. And I think it's due in part to that solid aluminum frame in there. I dig it. I think it's a great sound and it makes the knife and deploying the knife a little bit addictive. Yeah, I like it. I like it. Good looking blade. Let's get back to that deeply hollow ground, huge clip blade. In their write up, they talk about how this is kind of based on a slip joint hunting knife. They didn't really want to change the blade. Honestly, I don't know too much about those. Don't know. I do know this. I love how broad the clip is. As I've said in many of my videos, I love the Bowie knife shape. That's what this is, generally speaking, Bowie slash clip shape. And it is deeply hollow ground. Now, I know I've said in a lot of videos, I love that flat grinding, and I do. On a lot of knives, it really calls for it, and you get a very strong, adequately sharp blade, especially when you start running down to your relief edge all the way up from the top of the spine. But I've also said I like the hollow ground blades. Why is that? Well, let me back up and say if you have a very broad blade like you do with a black rhino, you can have a deep hollow grind uh, grinding, which this one does. Again, you can detect that by running your care finger, I uh, can't speak, fingers carefully towards the cutting edge. You can detect that hollow grinding. And what that does is produces a very slender, i.e. thin, cutting surface. And it's going to have less resistance in your material since it is hollow ground. You can look at my grinding video if you want to see just a few thoughts on grind patterns. And it just produces an extremely aggressive slicing blade. And like I said, this edge is very sharp. Much in, due, uh, much in part do that, that deep hollow grinding. Love it. Look at the flats on that blade. How they are also polished. So they spent some time polishing that, that OS 8 blade. And I think the results are impressive. Overall, the overall looks of the Black Rhino in the second kind of cool is a home run, in my opinion. I like it. Hole in one. Love it. You know, got the blade stamp there made in Taiwan. Don't care where it's made. Nor should you. I know some guys have issues with overseas made knives, I know. Um, if you're going to make it in the United States, you just know that it's going to be much more expensive. It just is. How's the lockup? We've already talked about how impressive the sound is when the Black Rhino deploys. It is. And guess what? The lockup is absolutely rock solid. There's no movement left to right, none up and down. Should you have some movement left to right as the knife wears, you can adjust that pivot screw. Right there, bros. Easy enough to do. 
Uh, how's the thumb stud? I do talk about my thumb studs a lot. And it's a minor thing, but it is a big thing. If your thumb stud design is jacked up, your knife deployment is going to be jacked up. And this one is not. It's perfect. Now, I'm right-handed, and but guess what? You can flip it over if you want. Cool. And you get a lot of traction on that thumb stud. It's terraced. It's flat. Not the goofy volcano shape we got in the black sable. Don't like that one. Decent. So great thumb stud, strong lockup, fast lockup. Now you're looking at this. Hey, what's that stuff on the back? Well, um, this is my own personal. I liked it so much I bought it. I like the company so much I bought it. Yep, I like the Black Rhino, so I went ahead and sprung for it. As such, I can modify it. One thing, and this is a criticism and I think a fair one on the Black Rhino, um, is that it has no jimping. I know I talk a lot about that. It has actually no traction whatsoever from the upper spine running all the way back to the back spine of the knife. That's one reason I added skateboard tape. Easy, easy modification that you can do. I highly recommend it, but it gets a little bit deeper than that. Uh, another reason I think it's very appropriate on this blade, since Hello Cold Steel, you did not put jimping here. That is a bad thing. Uh, not just for traction, which is important, especially if you go into a thrust attack with your Black Rhino. However, it is uh, possible you may choke down on your handle in a combat situation. Again, I heaven forbid, but if you were to employ this knife in defensive means, you know, you could find yourself holding the handle down here. And guess what? If you were to accidentally grasp that handle hard, you could easily, on the Black Rhino, actuate that lock fold the knife right on top of your old fingers cutting yourself badly losing a finger that is a disadvantage to the black rhino they should have had jimping up here not just for traction but also to index your fat finger index means we can feel it we position our finger on the knife the same way every time thus avoiding the potential folding episode of our blade in the middle of a life and death situation. You with me on that? Okay, that's a bad thing. You grasp it right here in the heat of the battle. And by the way, that lock back on the Cold Steel Rhino, very easy to actuate. There's another criticism. That little spring inside the handle there, see that little black thing, the little leaf spring? That should be made much stronger Yes, and I'll probably contact Cold Steel about that. Say, hey dudes, this is a heavy duty use, seven ounce tactical folding knife in the POU of defensive blade mostly. I think it's just too darn big for a comfortable EDC blade. I know guys do that all the time. Hey, I carry a big blade all the time. Yeah, I know you do. Um, I do too sometimes, but I like the smaller blades when it comes to EDC. They just function better. A uh, little bit big for the Black Rhino. So in the POU of large folding tactical blade, that should be a much stiffer retraction mechanism. Now, and a Cold Steel got it right in the Lawman, which is in my container uh, on loan. I don't have that, but it's a lot harder to actuate. This is a very easy uh, lock back to actuate. They need to fix that. Now, it's not a showstopper. I mean, it's not so bad that I go, oh my gosh, that sucks. I just would never buy the knife. Obviously, you know, I would go, I would have gotten rid of it. Knives I don't like that have issues, I pitch them. I get rid of them. I trade them away. Uh, sell them. That's just the way it goes. I will not keep them in the TMP inventory unless they have something going for them. So, keep that in mind. Just a couple thoughts. The handle overall is very ergonomic. Feels good in hand. I kind of wish they would have radiused that handle more. See how those you have some sharp corners on there? We shouldn't be dealing with these sharp corners. That should be radius to fit the human hand better. It does look cooler. Maybe, uh, maybe that would have necessitated them making the metal frame, the aluminum frame, a little bit thinner. And maybe the scales a little thicker. That way you have a capability to radius the scales. Just a thought. Um, it was when I first got the knife and when I was playing with it and I carried it for several days, I was kind of bugged by that. I was like, man, why do you have those sharp shoulders on there? But now that I've had it for a while and used it, 
I don't notice it as much anymore. So, not a huge deal. Hey, look at that nasty pommel on the end. You could use that for an impact attack, uh, attack if you had to. Again, heaven forbid. There's a reverse grip, forward grip. Lots of real estate on the handle for whatever grip you want. Remember that lockback warning I told you about? That's a huge deal with this knife. The clip is very well executed on this one. Polished, which goes in line with the whole theme of the very handsome Black Rhino, don't you think? Matches nicely and reverse. Eh, I lied. I'm thinking of the Recon 1. It's reversible. Not here. You're stuck with it. Now, that's not a bad thing for me because you know I'm an advocate of that tip-up carry you know, I know some guys like to tip down. They think it's safer. I've never had a knife open in the pocket except the Tenacious. But that wasn't even in the pocket. That was in a fanny pack, and it was in a weird orientation. So it doesn't count. But I love that that carry right there. Position that thumb stud really fast for deployment. Wicked. I know some guys, you know, they really like the waved feature so they can pocket deploy. I don't find it to be a huge issue myself. I'll take both if I can get it, but if I don't, not a big deal. Decent pocket clip. Now, would I have liked it mounted clear up here? Um, you know, this is probably going to surprise you. Probably not. Not in this particular knife. And the reason I say that is because I think it would have ruined some of the looks. You know, if you would have mounted it up here, then we have an occluded, so to speak, an occluded pommel. Uh, I don't know. You know, I kind of like it where it's at. And that might turn some dudes on and that they have this end exposed so they can extract the knife from their pocket. So jet, some guys will like it. Uh, I, I'm happy with where it's at. I mean, it doesn't have to. You know, would I move it up? Probably not. Not on this one. Can take it apart if you have to. I mean, there's your mini Torx screws on the slabs. You can take it out. Notice those slabs, though, are kind of indexed into the metal. So I'm not sure if you'd slide them out sideways. It looks like they kind of have to come out sideways. But that's cool. How about the weight? I mean, some guys are going, are you kidding me? Nothing fancy's digging a 7-ounce tactical folder? Yeah, I'm digging it. Uh, then again, remember what I always say. I don't mind the extra weight as long as I get something in return. And what you get in return on the Black Rhino is a big freaking blade that's razor sharp that because it is so broad in its width, it's going to slice extremely well and strong enough tip where it can do some thrust attacks if you'd have to do that as well. Yeah, I love that blade. And so the price on getting a blade of that magnitude maybe is going to be well over the four ounce mark, which is my arbitrary limitation. Adding that skateboard tape on there is huge. Uh, at least if you're without gloves because you can index nicely and feel it. Even with gloves you'll be able to tell if you're on it. But it makes it so you can choke up on the blade, control it, maybe choke all the way back. And then if you run out of skateboard tape then you know you're on your lock. You know, Again it kind of comes down to training. If you carry this knife a lot you're going to get real familiar with it and you're going to get comfortable with its ergonomics. And I think the ergonomics other than the really sharp shoulders on it which I've mentioned are pretty darn good. The price and the value on the Cold Steel Black Rhino, I think, is reasonable. Compared to that Black Sable, which is $300, maybe $270, depending on where you go, the Black Sable is a bargain at around $130. And you're getting basically, in my opinion, the same kind of coolness factor, second kind of cool, that beautiful mirror polish on the surfaces, the polished black micarta, you know, for $130. Plus, you're getting a fairly decent, I think, fighting knife in a foldable form. Decent with a pretty strong lock. I think the lock is strong as long as you don't inadvertently disengage it right here. Improvements, I think I've covered it. I'd like to see that leaf spring made stronger and jimping. Clear jimping right here, aggressive, all the way along the upper spine to be continued on the back spine of the blade. If you had that, the Black Rhino would be pretty much a perfect design as far as I'm concerned. I can live with the square shoulders. Decent blade. Decent blade. Here it is compared against a Recon 1. You can see that even the Recon 1, which I said is a large, heavy-duty, hard-use tactical folder, that Black Rhino blade is even 
wider and a little bit longer. So, decent. Awesome knife, nothing fancy. There's your review of the Cold Steel Black Rhino. I am a fan. Good job, Cold Steel, on this one. Thanks for the good ratings for coming along in the project. So much more fun to come. Nothing fancy. See ya.